quarter mile, turn right onto Clark Avenue. Turn right onto Clark Avenue. Continue for half a mile. There you beauties are. This isn't horrible, is it? What the fuck? Ah! In 800 feet, you will arrive at your destination. You have arrived. and Feelings is the name of the album and that's Saber Dance. Clyde Clifford with Beaker Street from KAY in Little Rock. It's 121. Just remember to say hello to the third man on the two-party line. Uh, this is probably going to seem like a odd pilgrimage uh, to take. But um, I have a feeling that a good number of you out there m uh, may understand. So back when I was a kid and had just gotten my driver's license, I... would drive around town at night in uh, the cold of winter and uh, after visiting with friends and whatnot uh, and um, yeah you know whatever happened uh, when I was visiting with friends but um, then as I drove around and Think about this for a moment now. I, and this is just, I, I date myself horribly with something like this, but um, back then there were no FM radios in cars. They were all AM radios, right? And they had the little push button channel selectors and <clears throat> love that stuff. Anyway, uh, so all we had was AM radio in the car. Now, there were a number of radio stations in the area that uh, played top 40. We're talking uh, mid-70s. And so uh, no shortage of uh, channels to listen to. But 
They were all just uh, standard top 40 music. At that same time, there was a move on FM radio to start picking up the deeper cuts of um, music from bands that probably had hits on the AM radio, um, on the top 40 radio, but also an awful lot of artists that, you know, you just weren't going to hear on AM radio or top 40 radio. Uh, a good example would be like uh, Billy Joel, uh, the song Captain Jack. You're not going to hear that on uh, uh, Top 40 uh, radio back in the 70s, but you would hear it on what, what had become known as underground radio, uh, which was exclusively on FM, uh, with this one exception. And that one exception is the mighty 50,000-watt AM voice of KAAY, Little Rock, Arkansas. And all of the fans know that station as Beaker Street. Now, Beaker Street only broadcast for a few hours at night. And... The cool thing about the time that it chose to do that is that AM signals propagate better through the atmosphere once the sun has gone down, right? So the signal could actually reach out well beyond what would be considered the normal routine um, listening range for KAY in Little Rock, Arkansas. So it actually reached all the way up into Beaver Dam, Wisconsin, which is where I was driving around at night and having fun. And I found KAAY, Beaker Street, and just thought, wow, <laughs> this doesn't happen on AM radio. So it was really cool, very special. So if you know, you know. Um, KAAY, Little Rock, Arkansas, Beaker Street. Guess where I am? Well, you probably already know. I've probably put something somewhere in the show notes or uh, in the uh, title of the video. I'm at the KAAY 1090 kilohertz FCC tower building, the transmitter, right? So this is the transmitter site. And look out beyond, and you can see the tall antennas, two of them. And this is where the signal for KAAY Beaker Street originated. Now these days my understanding is that KAAY is doing religious programming, so good for them. But uh, that kind of um, is in stark contrast to the underground FM type uh, music that it was playing uh, kind of late at night in the 70s. Owned by Vertical Bridge. K-A-Y-A-M. Tower 1, 2, and 3. I don't know. I only see two really tall towers. So my guess is that maybe the smaller tower here with the, uh, with the link dish may be the third tower. I'm not really sure but I don't really see a third tower that I can spot from here anyway. No, <laughs> can't look through all those trees. Let's go out and find out. Uh, well, of course, I, I drove you in here, but we'll walk back out here to McDonald Road in um, Wrightsville, Arkansas. 
So Wrightsville is kind of like a southern burb of Little Rock. So not surprising that they would have their transmitter tower actually located much further away than, say, downtown uh, Little Rock. But yeah, we can get out here a little bit and take a look back and see it. Yeah, I don't see a third tower, so I don't know if there was uh, at the time that Beaker Street was uh, broadcasting. You know, maybe they took one down or maybe there's a shorter one out there. Usually when there's a couple of antennas like this, it uh, represents a, a directional um, uh, signal. If you have just one antenna, that's pretty much omnidirectional and it'll go equally out in all directions. But usually when you have a couple of antennas like this, you can see one of them now. There's the other one coming into view. When you have two antennas like this, it, it forms a directional uh, beam for the signal. So I don't know, I'd have to do some additional research to find out exactly how that played out. But uh, my understanding is, is that you could hear KAAY at night down in Cuba. And you certainly could hear it up in um, Wisconsin. So. <laughs> but this is just this is just very cool for me um, because of the you know the unique history that I have with this station. It was always kind of a bummer when I couldn't get it tuned in. You know, there were some nights that it just didn't want to come in. There were other nights that uh, it came in loud and clear. So crazy. I wish we could get actually inside the property, but I'm sure this is private property, no trespassing, all that, you know, sort of stuff. So we can't go any further, but, um, but there you have it. The broadcast antennas for Beaker Street. Now, for those of you watching this video, were you aware of Beaker Street? Did you listen to Beaker Street? Where did you hear Beaker Street? How far away from Little Rock, Arkansas were you when you were able to tune in to Beaker Street? Because that's really the cool part about it, right? I mean, it's one of the cool things about it. It's probably equally as cool as the music that they played on Beaker Street, that being, you know, underground radio style of music. Um, I, you know, I don't know. Uh, probably later on it would have been called um, album rock, I suppose. That's what it evolved into. And at least in the 90s, that's pretty much what we called what was going on on certain radio stations. But yeah, it was a departure from typical AM radio fare. And it was really cool to be able to listen to it in the car while you're driving around, because usually you had to go home and turn on your FM in order to listen to <laughs> the underground FM radio stations. So here's the one and only underground AM radio station from the 70s, Beaker Street. Hope you enjoyed that. That was just kind of a fun uh, thing. It's like I, I knew I'd be coming through Little Rock, and I'm like, well, there's no way that I can't uh, find the transmitter towers for Beaker Street. There was just no way I could come through here without doing that. So anyway, I hope that was fun for you as much as it has been for me. And um, we'll see you in the next video. Music of Judy Collins. Joan of Arc. 12 midnight. This is Beaker Street. K-A-Y. Little Rock.
Baker Street with Clyde Clifford. K-A-A-Y, Little Rock Run.